So I'm just done with this beautiful pair of buckskin shorts and about to send it off in the mail. But before I do so, I wanted to give you guys a chance to check them out. So the majority of these shorts, there goes a scrub jay. The majority of these shorts are made from one hide with half of the hide for one leg and half of the hide for the other leg lined up along the spine. And I also included pieces from another hide for the waistband and the pockets. So shorts like this are relatively simple to make, but the tailoring and the shaping is really, really key. So I recommend cutting a pair, an old pair of shorts or something that you get from the thrift store to give yourself a nice pattern because it's pretty hard to intuitively freehand a pattern for pants and shorts. But once you've got it and you're good to go, go ahead and line them up along the spine and you're gonna make sure that the short pattern does not go into the belly or the armpits of the hide because those are weak spots and the crotch is the area that is under the most tension. So it's really important for that to be as strong as you can get it. Second important point is using the right seams in the right places. So I like to use a lot of overlapping seams for my buckskin, which is where you go like this. And so the inside seam, the inseam, is going to be overlapped and I like to use either the running stitch or a saddle stitch to make that a really nice, strong, stretch controlling stitch. And then for the butt crack, this is a big thing to think about because very, very typical for buckskin pants and shorts is the soggy butt phenomenon where it looks like you could take a couple poops in your pants without anyone noticing. So I really try to do my best to avoid or at least control as much as possible the soggy butt phenomenon. And one of the best ways to do that is to start off with the shorts a little bit snug, snugger than you ultimately want them because buckskin is always going to stretch. So if you start out with it exactly the right size, it's going to be too big before long. So starting out with them snug and that way the, the shaping is going to take up some of that stretch. That's going to help with the soggy butt thing. The second thing is using a plain seam, which is a seam sewn like this, but sewn inside out for the butt crack seam. It's way better at stretch controlling than an overlapping seam. And you definitely want to use a parallel stitch as opposed to a diagonal stitch. So running stitch or a saddle stitch. I usually just use a running stitch. And then the final piece for controlling the soggy butt phenomenon is I like to use a welt, but not just a single layer welt, a doubled welt. So a welt is a piece that you sandwich in the seam, and I'm gonna cut it wide enough that I can fold it in half. And then I have to be pretty careful in my sewing to keep that folded edge exactly lined up with the edges of the buckskin the whole way. When you're using a single welt, you can just have the welt be wherever and trim it so that it's flush at the end of the process. But for this, I need to sew carefully to keep it flush. For the butt shaping, I put in darts right in the middle of each butt cheek so that rather than just kind of sitting out from the butt, they're gonna curve around the butt. And then the waistband is also gonna do a lot for that nice waist shaping and hip hugging, which is important for shorts. Otherwise, when you're being really active in them, they're going to be kind of moving outside of you and not clinging to you as you're working. So what I like to do for waistbands is do them in several sections. In this case, I used the thick neck of another hide and I dyed it with black walnut, which is going to tighten the hide a bit so it's not going to stretch as much. And then I actually cut the pieces rather than just rectangles. I cut them kind of trapezoidal so they're tapered at the top so that the seam starts out looking like this or all of those pieces start out like this and then I sew them together and that brings them so that they hug the hips. So you can see this is in four sections and that gives me really nice shaping. And then finally for pockets, I like to have a pocket that I put on the outside rather than the tuck to the inside pocket like most standard jeans have because I just find buckskin is so bulky that it, you really feel it and I find that it's uncomfortable to have those bulky style inside pockets. So just small pockets attached to the outside is a good way to go. For the fly, I like a button fly and I have both sides of the fly doubled over. So if you can see this seam here, it's actually exactly double that. And then I fold that to the inside and sew. And I do the same thing on the inside of the fly where the buttons are sewn. So both the button holes and the button area are reinforced with a double layer of buckskin. Because the fly, it's under a lot of tension and that's gonna really help that be more secure. So that is this lovely pair of buckskin shorts and I am so excited to get them in the mail. 
to their intended owner. Oh, actually, one last thing, which is belt loops are really nice for that fine tuning adjustment. You do a lot of your shaping with the waistband and with the darts, but having belt loops and the ability to put a belt on is gonna just clinch it just right. Plus, of course, you need a belt to put your belt, so. Beautiful pair of buckskin shorts. adventures these shorts are going to have being worn around by my friend Matt Graham who's quite an outdoor adventurer so God knows what these shorts are going to get up to.